Another important measurement that we have to be familiar with that describes the way that our blood flows inside blood vessels of our cardiovascular system is a measurement known as the resistance of our blood vessel. Now in this lecture, we're not only going to focus on resistance, we're also going to discuss the relationship between resistance and something called the volume flow rate of our blood. So let's begin by describing the factors that influence our resistance of the blood vessel. So we have three different factors that determine the resistance to blood flow in a given blood vessel. So factor number one is the viscosity of our blood. And the viscosity is the internal resistance inside the blood that exists because of the attraction between the molecules and particles and cells that are found within our blood. So the more attraction we have inside the blood between the individual particles, the higher our internal resistance is and the greater our viscosity is and we'll talk about what the actual relationship between viscosity and the resistance is in just a moment. Now, factor number two that affects resistance is the length of our blood vessel. And factor number three is the radius or diameter of that particular blood vessel. Now, by far, the most important physiological factor that influences the resistance inside our blood vessel is the blood vessel diameter. And that's because the blood vessel length and our viscosity of that blood under normal conditions does not actually change considerably. But because our autonomic nervous system innervates and controls the smooth muscle found inside the blood vessel, the diameter and the radius can easily be controlled by our body. And that's exactly why it's the diameter that actually influences the resistance of blood vessels the most in our body. So the next question is, what exactly is the relationship between the resistance and these three different factors that we mentioned just a moment ago? So the relationship is given by this equation. So our uppercase R, the resistance of the blood vessel, is equal to 8 multiplied by the viscosity multiplied by the length of that blo a blood vessel divided by pi multiplied by R raised to the power of 4. Now, from this equation, we see that the resistance depends directly on the viscosity and on the length. So, if we increase the length or if we increase our viscosity, we increase the resistance of our blood vessel. But, by increasing our radius, we basically increase the denominator and that decreases our resistance. So we see we have an inverse relationship between our resistance and our radius. In fact, we see that by changing our radius, that actually affects our resistance the most. And that's because the radius is raised to the power of four. So to, uh, to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following three bullet points. Now in bullet point number one, we basically want to double the length of our blood vessel while keeping everything else constant. So if L is doubled, then we see we multiply this left side by two, so we have to uh, multiply the right side by two, so that increases our resistance by a factor of two. So doubling the length will double our resistance. And likewise, if we double the viscosity, but we keep everything else the same, then we also double our resistance. So by doubling the length or by doubling our viscosity, we can increase the resistance by a factor of two. But let's see what happens if we double our radius. By doubling our radius, we not only double our denominator, we actually increase our denominator by a factor of 16. And that's because the radius is raised to the power of 4. And 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 
So if the radius is doubled, but everything else is allowed to stay the same, then we decrease our resistance by a factor of 16. And that means in general, changing the radius will affect the resistance much more than if we change the length or if we change our viscosity. So from this discussion, we can basically conclude that our body actually changes the resistance of our blood blood vessels not by changing the viscosity or the blood length uh, the blood vessel length but rather by changing the uh, radius the diameter of our blood vessel so it's no surprise that our body uses the blood vessels diameter to control the resistance and this ultimately controls the volume of blood that actually reaches our tissue or organ of our body now let's discuss something known as the volume flow rate so the volume flow rate is simply the volume of blood that passes our blood vessel over, over some given period of time. And in physics and from fluid dynamics, we know that our volume flow rate of the blood Q is equal to the change in pressure between some point one and some point two inside our blood vessel divided by the resistance of that blood vessel. Now, if we take this equation and we plug it in for the resistance, we basically get the following equation. So Q is equal to pi radius, the power of four, multiplied by the change in pressure, divided by A, multiplied by the viscosity, multiplied by the length of that blood vessel. Now, this equation in fluid dynamics is known as Poissier's equation. And as long as we assume that the blood is incompressible and that the fluid is flowing, the blood is flowing in laminar or streamlined flow, then we can use this equation to study and understand the way that our blood flows inside our blood vessels. Now, why is this equation important? Well, this equation is important because it describes the volume flow rate to the resistance indirectly. So notice that we have a radius on the left side of the equation and we know that the radius depends on the resistance or the radius determines the resistance. So let's say by increasing the radius, we decrease our resistance and from this equation, if we increase the radius, we ultimately increase the volume flow rate. So what this means is, if we increase the radius even by a small amount, we increase the volume flow rate by a much greater factor. And this can be seen from the following graph. So if we assume that L, the length, the viscosity, and the change in pressure is constant, and we plot our relationship, this equation, we basically get the following curve. Now, the y-axis is the relative volume flow rate, Q, and the x-axis is the relative radius given by upper, uh, lowercase r. So from this relationship, we see that even a tiny change in the radius can greatly increase the relative flow rate of our blood. Now, what this means is our body can actually adjust the radius and the diameter of small arteries and arterioles in order to actually meet the metabolic requirements of oxygen and nutrients that our organs and tissues of our body actually need. So to see, to demonstrate what this actually means and how our body controls the resistance and ultimately the volume flow rate, let's Let's take a look at the following example. So let's suppose we are being chased by a dog and at the moment that we begin to run away from that dog, our skeletal muscle in our body begins to work much more vigorously and what that means is we're going to increase the amount of oxygen and nutrients that the skeletal tissue, skeletal muscle tissue will actually need.
Now, the question is, how exactly can the body actually increase the volume flow rate to the tissue of our body that needs the increase in metabolic nutrients and oxygen? Well, one way is to increase our pressure. So let's take a look at the following equation, Poissier's equation, which is rewritten right here. Now, let's suppose that our skeletal muscle tissue requires five times as much blood as in a normal situation when the skeletal tissue is fully relaxed. And that means what we want to do is we basically want to multiply Q by a factor of five. Now, how exactly do we multiply Q by factor 5? Well, one way to increase the right side of the equation is to increase the change in pressure by a factor of 5. So we see that one way to actually meet this increased requirement of the skeletal muscle tissue is for the body to actually increase the change in blood pressure to 500% of its original value. Now the problem with this is if we increase the pressure by that much that can basically pop our blood vessels. It can blow up those arteries and that can lead to many many problems. So we see by increasing the pressure by that much that can actually be dangerous. So what the body does instead a much less dangerous and a much more effective way to actually regulate the volume flow rate to the skeletal muscle tissue is by controlling the resistance of our blood vessel by changing the radius. So let's take a look at that same equation. So we multiply the Q by 5. The question is what can we do to the left side to get the factor of 5? Well, basically, we can increase the radius by a factor of 1.5, and that's equivalent to only increasing the radius by 50%. And that's because 1.5 raised to the power of 4 gives us approximately 5. So we see that in this case, to get the same volume flow rate, we have to increase the pressure by factor 5 and that can be very dangerous. So instead of actually uh, blowing up those blood vessels, popping those blood vessels, our body instead chooses to increase the radius only by 50% to basically get that same volume flow rate to our skeletal tissues. So what exactly can we conclude from our discussion? Well, we see that our body can regulate the amount of blood that actually it delivers to some given tissue over some time period by either vasoconstricting or by vasodilating by changing the radius of our arterioles, the small arteries in our body. So we see that this is actually done because a small change in the diameter of these blood vessels will basically greatly change the resistance and that will greatly influence the volume flow rate of blood inside our body. So once again, resistance is controlled by changing the radius inside our body. And by changing the radius, we also change our Q, the volume flow rate, by the greatest percent amount compared to other factors such as pressure length as well as viscosity of the blood.